you know. There are entire worlds inside all of us that nobody ever sees. One third of our lives transpire in our sleep and we eventually forget that. We forget that because if we made life decisions based on what happened in our dreams, we would eventually be dead. But after this dream, I figured maybe we as adults could become smart enough to learn from our dreams and to extract potential. Because it is life experience, regardless of which it actually happened or not. Ask an English major if they think people can learn from fiction. But the original content of the video was going to be me telling a story about a dream I just had. So, here is that. Wanna hear a story? See, it happened last night, in a dream. It was at a school. The school was a bit of a high school and a bit of a college, maybe. It was full of IB students or something. I, I was walking by outside in after the fresh morning rain about lunchtime, and I saw a girl climb up on the railing of her balcony and stand on it with just her feet. I figured, of course, she'd probably suicidal or on drugs or both. And uh, it's kind of strange because nobody else seemed to saw her. They were all talking amongst themselves in their own conversations and their own lives and. You know, people were walking by me, pushing me, and they were text messaging to their friends or whatever. And I kept walking. You know, I, I figured on television, I will see how people say, Don't do it! Or, you have so much to live for! And that kind of stuff. And that doesn't work because, you know, suicidal or depressed people don't even understand that. Even if... You did convince them not to jump that time, or because they wouldn't want to do it in front of a bunch of other people. They, uh, they would just do it later. Or, if they did do it, then the people that tried to convince them not to would just feel real guilty about it. And, and I should have done more, or, you know, that kind of thing. Or when they went home to their, you know, their parents, or their friends, or their husbands, and they would those people would say that you couldn't have done anything to help them, that sometimes it's just out of your control, and that that person, everybody makes their own decisions, that kind of thing. I didn't think she would jump, but she did, and she smashed into the ground, but it was alright because it had just rained and she hit the grass, and it was a pool of water, it was kind of wet and muddy, and it's more of a squish than a whatever the noise makes when somebody uh, smashes into the ground. But after some rolling around in pain, she uh, got up and uh, basically st stood and uh, looked like anybody else. But I uh, went over to her. She she was not standing in the same place. She had walked you know, over to, uh, where other people were bustling about. It was kind of like a city. She was standing at the corner of the building, and I, uh, said, what's your name? She kind of, she kind of, you know, quiet mumble, said her name, and I said, the name's Mac. And I stuck up my hand, and, uh, she kind of looked at it and put her hand out to it, and we, uh, I felt her hand, and she felt my hand, and her hand felt like purple jasmine petals, exactly. Her fingers were long and slender and white, and you know, there were no calluses, she had not done work in her past. Smooth, supple skin, and I motioned for us to walk, and kind of massaged her, her hands, muscles, and all the portions of the hands people have, and we walked down the sidewalk down the way I came, and past where she fell, and uh, to our left was the uh, student parking area, there had just been, uh, the blacktop had just been redone, the, the smell of the fresh asphalt kind of mingled with the fresh rain kind of smell, and, uh, we walked, and 
yeah, I asked her, uh, so what are your plans for tomorrow? She said she didn't have any. And she started to feel better by then than she did before. And I felt good too. It was probably the most romantic time I ever felt in my life, possibly. Even though it was in a dream. And, uh, so I asked her what her plans were for tomorrow, and she said she didn't have any. And, uh, I said, well, let's make some. And, you know, it was romantic, not like eating spaghetti and meatballs with dark red wine and the candlelight alone, candlelit dinner with roses, romantic. It was real. It was two people truly connecting where they had never connected before. And, uh, that was nice. Then I woke up. I wish I didn't wake up, but, th but that was when I woke up, and I guess that means it's the end of the story. And I guess that means now that it's been recorded, I won't completely forget it. And I guess that means you won't either.